During extravaganza on Water Island, it's a season celebrated by hiding painted eggs and searching for them among the rocks and trees. But what if there's something out there that doesn't want to be found? Many have tried to capture even a glimpse of the whispered about creature, but with little success. All we have are some blurry photographs and the stories that come with them. Although the written word is not the only way that alleged encounters have been recorded. <laughs> Due to the speculative nature of this evidence, there remains a fierce debate on the exact features of this creature. While conducting interviews for this series, we came across a monster who had already been compiling and comparing our findings. Blabbit had spent years compiling and studying evidence, and after learning of our documentary, has agreed to join forces. Working with Blabbit gave us access to unprecedented physical evidence, a patch of brown fur. We sent it to the lab for further analysis. We also contacted an artist to sketch the details of the creature based on our findings. A withdrawn being, with brown fur and large antler-like appendages. The results were not quite what we expected. Ho, 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 no. But when the lab results came back, we were even more surprised. The fur wasn't brown, it was yellow. We approached a monster with yellow fur for an interview. The individual would only agree to speak with us anonymously. The photos had been staged, hoaxes created to sell merchandise. This news weighed heavy, and the trail had gone cold. We had to reassess the rest of our evidence. The ancient volume Octopus shared was too old to be the same hoaxer's handiwork, but it could have been written by anyone with no method of verification. Rare Geode's suspicious photo had since been debunked and wasn't relevant. But the hoaxer notably only used vision, but it could have been written by anyone with no method of verification. Rare Geode's suspicious photo had since been debunked and wasn't relevant. But the hoaxer notably only used visual trickery. So Sponge's audio recording was our last remaining clue. We decided to investigate the area and do some digging. Dip, 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 dip. The dipsters felt vibrations as if something was jumping up and down. The sound pattern of someone walking doesn't line up with the recording. But if the same creature had been hopping, a perfect match. We brought our findings back to Blabbit, only to find that the trail had been following us. A map delivered anonymously. This was not entirely new territory for Blabbit. It had established its investigative ability with a map-based mystery years prior. But this map came with a direct challenge. Follow me. And we did. We found a makeshift stage. A newer, more brazen display than ever before set up by the hoaxer. Or was it? After years in the shadows, enduring rumors of its existence and fabricated sightings, Epic Blabbit wasn't sure whether it would ever emerge from hiding. But after seeing the first installment of Following the Trail, and all the excitement and anticipation that followed, Epic Blabbit decided it should step into the spotlight for all to see. And while the case of one Water Island monster has been closed, there will always be another sound or shadow to raise the question, Hey, what was that?